the land and sea again. The Hwasong tidal flood is an interconnected web of plant and animal life. At low tide, crabs emerge from burrows as shellfishers and birds alike spread out across the mud to find their food. Each of these bird species has a specialized bill shape, their own perfect tool for catching food. There can be no escape from these birds, even for crabs trying to hide deep in the mud. Perfectly adapted for catching food, most of these birds cannot swim at all well. So as the tide rushes back in, they fly across the seawall to Hwasong Lake. Here, the birds can keep on feeding or can rest, safe from predators and disturbance. The Hwasong wetlands support several threatened and near-threatened species, including the Great Knot and the Bartel Godwit, both arriving here after a non-stop flight from Australia and New Zealand. At Hwasong, these birds refuel and rest up on the tidal flat before taking their next great flight, another week or so without food or rest, all the way to their breeding grounds in Russia or Alaska. And feeding alongside these shorebirds are several species designated as Korean National Natural Monuments. But these tidal flats in this lake are not only important to Hwasong City and to Korea, they are internationally important as defined by the Ramsar Convention. So how should we conserve this life-giving sea and tidal flat for now and into the future. How can we ensure that our children and our children's children can continue to marvel at Hwasong's great flight? <laughs>